Okay, so today's tech talk, we're going to start out talking about integrating 3D reality meshes with BIM models. Give you a little background about myself. I've been with Bentley for a little over five years. Uh, prior to that, my background was photogrammetry and dealing with LiDAR point clouds. During my career, I was a CAD manager for 20 years, so I supported many products out there and dealt with many environments, civil engineering, architecture, you name it, I had to deal with it when it came to being a CAD manager. I do want to be clear, I'm not an architect, so when it comes to the terminology, maybe I may not say the best words, but um, I want you to understand the concept to it, how I'm using this reality mesh. I am new to Ecosim Building Designer. Like I said, my background's more of CAD manager and civil engineering, but uh, I'll tell you one thing, it's a very easy product to use, very intuitive. I got into it and very quickly was able to start digesting these models and making real stuff from it. So today we're going to see the advantages of having BIM design. So I'll show you how we can take an existing condition and make a BIM model from that. We could use this also then for time-lapse construction. I'll get right into Ecosim Building Designer and get into cutting exterior walls, creating the windows and the doors, creating openings, and then reviewing. We'll also look at photo navigation. So a lot of these are created from either photos or LiDAR point clouds. If you're using photos, we can also go back to the original photo that was used to create that, which helps to clarify some questions that you may have. I'll talk about classification of a mesh, cutting profiles of your mesh, uh, how this can be used for interior and exterior, and how do I capture this data. Uh, we'll be exporting then to LuminRT. So this is during construction process. Uh, it's a lot easier to send a drone up there, take a lot of photos. You could do this weekly, monthly, whatever your schedule permits. Uh, you could define kind of flight paths for your drone so that you could follow the same path every single time. We can do entire cities, so you could use this for infrastructure, trying to design everything in between, maybe show your proposed site layout that uh, you're integrating within a city environment. Uh, when it comes to buildings, sometimes rooftop inspections are required. So here we see IKEA. They could use this mesh to kind of associate any data that they have to this. We could use this with thermal imagery. Also very helpful when it comes to building if you want to see some heat loss. We can actually use thermal cameras to create this mesh and uh, visually see where heat is being lost. We can see a side-by-side -side comparison with the 3D model as well as the thermal imagery. This model here was taken from uh, point clouds, so we can use LiDAR with the same process. And then here we look at some construction uh, during construction phasing. And when you're dealing with a building, you have a lot of assets that are probably within it. Uh, we could use QR codes, so you could put it on your equipment, even on door jams, anything that you want to associate data to. Uh, when these are in your photo, we create the 3D model from it, and it will create a link that goes back to your database that you're working with. So any kind of data that you want to associate to this, whether it's maintenance, uh, time schedule, how it's been done, um, how often it's been inspected, the 
maker of the material, the manufacturer, a lot of those things can all be associated to it. Here we see in Google Earth, we can link in. And when we click on that push pin, we're seeing that metadata that's also in there. Now we can, when you're dealing with BIM, we can deal with display styles. So here's a case where we can see the doors highlighted and they're color coded of which doors are different types. So when we go through Navigator, um, this is another Bentley product. It's a way to view your BIM models quickly. Uh, we see here that we can see which doors are deadbolts, which are key cards, and where the safe room is. Now using this view, we can go through, we have preset views, so somebody could walk into this. This is a BIM model that has all that metadata associated to it. So right within here, we're seeing the building types, the manufacturers, the finish on it any metadata that was set when the original model was built. So here we're using data visualization. So we're seeing things so sorted by hardware type. We can also go through these are windows by glazing types. Full of proof glass, and we see occupancy type. Now, because this is a BIM model, we have the interior walls as well. We can see this in a section view here. And we can use a combination of that data visualization as well as the section lines that we've cut. See, we have lots of floors all set up, predefined for us, so we can go through and walk through this environment. Now, this could be viewed on an iPad, too, while you're out in the field. You could do this virtually, a walkthrough. You can even walk through walls if needed. And then at any time, we can access the preset views. Now I'd like to get into the actual meat and potatoes of Ecosim building designer and how it works with our reality meshes. So the first thing I want to emphasize is starting out with a grid. It's how architects work. Uh, everything's based off this grid format. So that's the first thing we want to do is start with a grid and then align our reality mesh to it. Well, first, I want to look at my floor manager see which floors I have set. I have one building and I have two floors and the roof. I'm only going to focus on floor one for today. And we look at our grid. And I see here I have an orthogonal grid and it's spacing every 20. So I can add more if I want, but I'm not really sure what size grid I need for this. But I want to turn one on. So I'm going to go to floor one just to turn on the grid, which will give me a starting point at my grid line of A1. And I'm going to turn off the microstation grid that was in the background. That's that gray grid that we saw there. Now I want to attach my reality mesh. We just go through the attach button. I browse to my file. And here I don't want to attach a coordinate system. Uh, this was done with the drone that had GPS, so it is in the real world coordinate system. But for my architect plans, I want to just stick with zero, zero. Now, when I bring in my mesh, we see it's floating to my cursor. I'm going to place it off to the side so that I can actually see how it's oriented and how I want to adjust it to my mesh. Now, I see right away it's floating way up in the air. 
I'm on floor one, which already has my elevation locked in there to my grid. So I want to pull that mesh down. It is just like a microstation element. Since I attach this just as a reference file, pretty much, uh, it's allowing me to grab this file and actually move it. So I see where the bricks are actually meeting the foundation here. That's where I want my first floor to start. And it's very obvious here in this mesh that I can see where the foundation is. I'm going to pick the move tool. And because it is a mesh, I can just snap to this. We see here I go down to my bottom right, and I want to flip my AccuDraw to a front view. This way it's going to lock me in there. Now, if you're familiar with AccuDraw, when you start moving in the direction, I can press the letter X, which is going to lock my X axis, and I also hit Z to lock the Z axis. I then just snap to my grid. So now I'm at the same elevation as my grid. Now I want to match up my X and Y. So first I'm going to move the corner that I want to use on the bottom of the grid. So I can cut a cross section of my mesh. It would allow me really to see exactly where the exterior wall is. So we see here it's showing that it chopped off part of the roof. I'm going to adjust that setting so that I could pull that clipping paint plane down just a bit. Now I can use my front view in the bottom right or I can use my isometric view. Now I see I have an extension on this building so I want to go in between the roof of the main building and above the extension building so I can get the real concrete structure that's here. see I can use just right click and standard microstation tools to choose move. We see that I'm on floor one so that it is locked with my ACS plane. So everything that I snap to now will be locked on this plane for my first floor. I'm going to grab the corner of this structure. I'm going to move this over and it's probably a little better if I zoom out uh, to see the actual grid that I have. There it is, and I want to snap to the corner of line 1A. So we see there the corner of my building is lined up. I now want to rotate it, and I'm going to use a three-point rotate so that I can start with the corner of my grid and rotate it so that my building aligns with this grid. Now it's easy just to snap to that line since I cut a section of it. And really, I can snap to anywhere along line one. I'd like to use an intersect snap when I can. And we see now I'm rotated to the grid, but the grid's not the right size. So I'm going to need to make some adjustments. If I open up my grid manager. Once again, we see the grid that I have. So in the horizontal way, I want to make an adjustment. First, I want to do a measurement of my building. So I use just standard microstation measure tool. Then it's going to snap to the corner of the building. And I want to look at the width of this building. I see there we're at 50 feet. So I'd like to set my grid for 25 feet. We now see that my grid lines up that way, and I just need to make an adjustment for the other direction. I'm going to fit my screen so we can see a little more of this. Now I do a simple measure across the length of the building. I have about 120 feet. So I could use increments of 20 is fine. My vertical is already set to 20. I just want to add a couple more 
columns. It's just that easy. We sit, hit create so that we can see what's there, and I see I'm actually one shy. But because it's dynamic, I can go just add one more grid line and complete it. And now we have the full grid. So let's talk about laying out my exterior wall. I can start out just using my grid since it's already laid out to the size of the building. First we're going to want to cut a section of this horizontal section so that we can look at the floor plan of this. I'm going to pull this down so that I'm not cutting through the roof. Once again I want to slice this right below the main roof. I'll just pick my wall tool. My dialog box pops up. On the left, I have it docked. Place wall. It's going to be a concrete cinder block. I realize I'm not really sure of the height of this wall, but I can use my reality mesh to take a look at it. And once again, use my standard microstation tools. Come in to measure. And that measure button's on many of these tabs, so you don't have to jump from tab to tab. If you need quick measurements, they're right there, or you can use shortcut keys right at your keyboard. I'm just going to do a rough measurement here to get an idea of how big the wall is. Now I'm rotating that to a front view. I'm pretty sure that wall goes up underneath that uh, aluminum siding that's there. But we see 16 feet, a little over, so I'm going to make my wall 17 feet for this. I'll use a fixed height of 17. And we can draw in many aspects here. Since my top right view there, I have a section cut. That's going to work like an architect's plan where it's a 2D file. I can also make this transparent. Makes it a little easier to work when you're drawing 3D models with it. So, like I said, I could snap to this grid to hold everything square 90 degrees. I know that's how this was built. And I continue to trace around my mesh to the corners. now see that I have my brick wall completely built through this. If I turn off my mesh, you see there I have my cinder block wall. We see in my top right view it is like an architect's plan where it does the texturing or the pattern, or the cross hatching. Now we're going to want to add some windows and doors. Once again, since I created this, it is existing conditions uh, from photographs. I'm going to show you, you can right click here and see a lot more tools that are available. I'm going to make sure that I have my set display depth on, which is that button right here. By default, it's off. Now, the lower left corner tells me to select the view, so that's what I want to do. I'm going to select my view, 
of where I want to create this clip. Now it's just going to be a visual clip. It's different than the clip that I showed you on the above right image. Now it says define the front and back. So I can use my top view that I have there to pick just in front of the building. And then my back clipping plane is going to be within. That now allows me to clip out the trees and everything that was blocking my view here. It allows me also to focus on these windows. Now for me to set these windows, I'm just going to take some measurements. Lock my Z. So it's important for me to know uh, my height of the window, the size of the window. I write these uh, notes down to keep track of different windows that I'm going to be adding to this. And I have a distance to the bottom of the sill, which I'll need. And when I'm adding these windows, I'm going to do a cut, which I want to adjust that to go right through the center of the window. Now you see it's snapping to the mesh. A trick you can use is hold down shift and control, which will turn that snapping off so that you can visually just bring it down to the window. In this case here, we can see that the photo is actually protruded through the window. So we're seeing that cutout that's going inside the building. So it's very obvious to tell where the window is. Plus, we have a concrete window sill that's actually protruding outside the building. I'm not really sure what kind of window this is. I'm just going to use an aluminum fixed window. I'm going to enter that width that I had of four feet, which is fine. I want to change the height to two. And I want it to match the depth. I, I know there's a thick wall that I put in here. Now, it's going to ask me where I want to place this wall. Because it's BIM, it's intelligent. It knows that that's a wall, so it's going to attach to that wall. I choose that, and then it wants me to slide it up and down of where it's going to go. Now, I notice when I'm snapping this that in my front view there, I see the windows actually coming down a little low. See that? And I realize that's because I didn't set that sill height. So I can go back quickly and just adjust that sill height from 3 feet to the 5 feet 9 inches that I had. Now we see using that same method when it grabs the wall. My window is actually at the correct height now. I'm going to cut completely through that concrete wall and give me a section through there that you see the window uh, just like it would look in an architect's plan. Now quickly I can cruise along and do this for each window as we go down the building, it's very quick. And we can do the same thing for doors. I add doors using the same method. Now we can create openings. So we see here we have some garage bays that are open. So I can always see when I hover over the mesh that it lights up in red. I can make an adjustment to that so that it stands out a little more of that section line. So I can go down to my cut. And we see there under element, it's the default type. So I want to turn the weight on and I'm going to bump that up to a nice thick line that I could see. And I also want to change it to red.
and I can turn off my crosshatch there. Just right click, level off. Very easy to do. And I can see my openings. It's very clear uh, where those garage bays are. You can see the concrete pillar there and the other opening. Now, if I spin this around, one technique that I use to spin it, it's real easy. You hold down shift and press your wheel and it, you can spin your view very quickly. I'm going to measure my opening and I see here that we're at 12. I'll make my opening 12 and I realize we're a little tight on time here so I, I do want to expedite this. I, I go through, set my cuts, I'm just going to pick at the corner of the bay and the software will cut right through that for me. So that's a combination of my BIM model with the reality mesh and you see that they are nearly identical how they line up. So photo navigation is very important. Now I'm going to start with a new model here uh, because the first time that I brought it in I didn't use the coordinate system. So this time I want to attach it, but I want to apply that coordinate system so it knows where it is in the real world. We see here in context capture where my photos were when I flew the drone and took the pictures. And what I'd like to do is link to those photos to take advantage of actually referring back to the original photo so I can see the high resolution image that was used. This is going to export an XML file. which then I go back into my Ecosim building designer and within our reality mesh box here we have a button and this is photo navigation now it opens up this dialog box and I'm going to browse to that XML file that I just made we can see those red dots show where all those photos were and I can turn on the actual image shape so that I can see which way that they're pointing. So I can see which ones are the nadir images that are pointing straight down and the oblique images. You can just double click on the photos to gain view of it. It'll link you back. You could zoom in if need be. I'd like to focus on an interest, a uh, point of interest. So I see there on the roof we have some kind of vent there. And it looks very good in the 3D model, but maybe I want to refer back to the original photo. Now it's going to sort it by resolution. So I want the smallest resolution, which will be the best view of a camera. We see it goes all the way up to 1.5 centimeters. I want to go down to the 0 0.6. If I double click on this, we see it's the photo that's actually straight above it. And I can zoom in there and see full detail of the original photo. This is very helpful when you're doing inspections. A lot of things that you want to refer back to your original image. So we can also do something called classification. In this case, I look at my reality model. I'm going to attach something for windows and doors. Now I can visually control this. So this is just my mesh. I can say that I want to dim everything around it. So now I'm seeing just my windows and doors that are highlighted for me. And also visually control the view of it so I can turn everything else off. So I'm just looking at my windows and doors. Or I could hide them as well. Uh, profiles, this is something I'd like to get a little more into. Uh, if you're familiar with Ecosim Building Designer, there is a tool in there to create profiles. Here we see on this building facade that uh, there's some cove molding here. And what we can do is just trace this line and actually uh, create that shape in a 2D cell. 
and then we can extrude that along any rooftop that we want so we can basically use this mesh to create this profile which then could be used down the road. We can mix interior and exterior. Here's a case where I use just a cell phone so I'm using a, a smartphone to take photos inside and outside of a building. It allows me to actually look at the whole environment and see what's going on where the walls are, where the studs and joists are. Now if you need more detail inside we've also joined with GeoSlam. Uh, this gives you the ability to walk through a room and use scanning methods just to uh, capture a room so as fast as you're walking. Now here's a case where just photos were used. We see it's very rough, not a great environment, but, but when we also use point clouds with it you get a lot more detail that we have here. So view sheds and line of sight, uh, when it comes to buildings, you place cameras around them. In this case, what I used was lighting so that I could attach uh, cameras basically around each corner and by color codes, I can see which camera is lighting up which area. So it allows me to do strategic placement of my cameras. Now these are dynamic, so I can move them around and see where uh, my void spots are going to be. I can also look at the vantage point from that building where that camera is. I can control the camera, spin it around. This is all dynamic through your reality mesh. So it will allow for camera placement for your building design. And also in 3D, we can actually see the void areas. So if I wanted to step away from this view of the camera, uh, I could actually just move to the side and I'll see all the 3D shadow effect that's created. Those are all void areas that that camera cannot see. So how they're created, we can use uh, basically survey methods, laser scanning, photogrammetry, um, different instruments, sensors that you're using, as well as how you're going to get that sensor up in the air, whether it's using a, a drone, helicopters, a selfie stick that you hold it up high. We can support many images that we have, um, JPEGs, tag images, you name it, we, have, we can bring in those images. Uh, also, multi-rig camera systems and videos. If you're in an area where you can't use drones, uh, we have some solutions where you could just attach some camera rig systems uh, to a crane. Uh, so this could be in around your environment already on site doing construction. So we see that's a great model created just from using a, a crane instead of a drone. We have many output formats that we can do. Uh, you'd be interested probably in OBJs if you're sharing with Universal, uh, with uh, basically other CAD platforms where you want to share this stuff. OBJ or FBX is a good way. KML for Google Earth. Uh, we can go out to Esri 3, 3D meshes as well, 3D PDFs, um, and true ortho photos. So when we take a look at throwing these BIM models into Lumen RT, uh, it looks very good. We see a lot of detail there. This is a BIM model created just from BIM. Uh, so we see that the exterior looks perfect. It's um, pretty much brand new building is what it would be considered uh, from a BIM environment. But this is a real lighthouse that a colleague of mine uh, created and did it from meshes. Uh, so we can also go through and here we see the same environment but with the reality mesh on it. Um, it gives a lot more realism to the model that you're creating. Uh, using just real photos, we can see the full detail of that concrete and the rust that's on that surface. I want to thank everybody for your time today. I apologize about some audio problems we were having at the beginning. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat window and I'll start going through and answer them as I can.